Hello everyone, it's Nicole Steele, the owner of The Joyful Stamper. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and every Saturday I've been featuring a card sketch from Split Coast Stampers on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com. And I also have been trying to make a video to go along with it. I also type up a written tutorial for you to print or save or pin to um, your Pinterest boards. So. <laughs> so I'm gonna start uh, with this card. This is this week's card and I like this color combination of Old Olive, Mango Melody, and we've got some Poppy Parade going on there too. So let's get started. Okay. I'm starting with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Old Olive cardstock and I've scored it down the middle at five and a half inches. And we're gonna take an Old Olive ink pad and the stamps that I'm using today are coming from the Ornate Style and Ornate Thanks stamp sets that are in the Stampin' Up! 2020-2021 annual catalog. If you don't have one of those catalogs, just let me know. Send me an email, nicole at thejoyfulstamper.com, and I can get your free catalog package in the mail to you. And we're going to stamp this corner stamp. And each of the four corners of our old olive card base okay and I always close my ink pads when I'm done with them because <laughs> I stick my fingers in them this is from another project or worse I drop my project in it now this is a mango melody sheet of cardstock and I've used used the ornate layers dies that coordinate with this stamp set in this product suite and I've die cut this out you can bundle the Ornate Layers dies with this Ornate Style stamp set here, and you can save 10% when you do that, or you can buy them each separately. But I'm going to use this large floral spray on here. And using a large stamp like this, I find it's easier to put the stamp rubber side up and then tap my ink pad, which in this case is Mango Melody, onto the stamp itself. Okay. Then this is not image is not going to entirely fit on this piece here, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. And I want to make sure that I get it in the direction that I want it to be. Okay, so I want it like this, and I'm going to stamp it. Now, you may find that you get a better impression and that you stamp better when you stand up. So do whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, I love that look. Love it. All right. Moving on. From that same Ornate Layers die set, I've die cut a piece of Ornate Garden Designer Series paper. This is Old Olive and it's got some gold foil in it. Can you see that? And this is the flip side of that pattern. So you could use this side if you want to, but I'm going for this one because I want that touch of gold in my card. So we're going to set these pieces aside for now. We're still working and I've got a piece of very vanilla cardstock here. And we're going to use a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad to stamp this daisy from Ornate Style on that very vanilla scrap. And the reason that I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black ink is because I want to color this with my Stampin' Blends. And when coloring with Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol ink markers, I don't want my image to bleed. So for that reason, I'm using Memento ink. It won't bleed when used with the alcohol ink markers. So now I'm bringing in Dark and Light Poppy Parade, Dark and Light Mango Melody, and Dark and Light Old Olive to color this image. Now you might want to give the Memento ink just a little bit extra time, drying time so that it really doesn't smear whenever you start to color. This is all personal preference. I like to start with the light shade of my Stampin' Blends, and I'm not an expert. I like using the light and the dark shades of each of these colors. And I go ahead and I uncap both of them. And I also prefer to use the bullet tip versus the brush tip. I just find I have more control that way. And so I'm going to go ahead and color just two or three petals at a time so that I can blend these easily. So I'm going to add some dark poppy parade and then I'm going to go over again, back over it again with the light poppy parade, then bringing back in the dark and adding a little bit more. 
And again, you can color to whatever looks good for you. There really aren't any rules to this. And the nice thing about these alcohol ink markers is that you aren't going to ruin the tips with cross-contamination by coloring over a former color you've laid down. And you can go over those and blend them and shade them as many times as you like. You don't even have to blend them if you don't want to. You could just add a few quick swipes of lines in there and not do any blending at all. It's entirely up to you. There are no stamping police. That's what I really like about this hobby is that the artists are the ones that draw these stamp images and then you get people like me who can't draw but who love color, who love the smell of paper. We get to play with it. And you're an artist for creating all this, right? Yes. Okay, so I finished coloring that. Cap those back on tight. And now I'm going to bring in my light and dark mango melody. And again, I'm gonna start with my light and I'm gonna color the center of this flower. And then I'll come in with my dark. And then I'll go back in with my light. And then I'll take my dark and just dab it a little bit more. Done with the flower center. And now we bring in the light and dark old olive. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do these, okay. I'm gonna color in this leaf first. And stamping, paper crafting in general actually, because that would include scrapbooking, can be as simple or as fancy and complicated as you want. And I'm just gonna add some dark and then go back over with the light in circles to blend that out and then I'll add some more dark and then I'm going to use my dark old olive to color that stem there. Okay we're done with the alcohol ink markers and I'm going to take my paper snips now and I'm going to cut that out. Don't you love the rich vibrant colors of this flower? That's the other strength of the stamp and blends alcohol markers. The colors are extremely rich and deep and vibrant. I wish I could say that there was a dye to cut this flower out, but there's not. But the paper snips will do a really good job of it. And just remember to turn your paper rather than the scissors to get around those flower petals. And that'll make your cuts much, much smoother. The other thing I like about the Stampin' Blends is I don't get those marker lines that you do with dye-based ink markers. Now dye-based ink markers are, are great because you can color right on your red rubber stamps. So they're good for that. You know, like if let's say you had a tree stamp, you could get multiple, oh, especially if you wanted to do it for fall, you could color it with your Stampin' Write markers that are dye-based right on your stamp in all kinds of shades of fall colors. And that would work nice. They blend out, blends alcohol markers, you can't do that. You would ruin your stamps. So there's a place for both. But I find myself reaching for my Stampin' Blends alcohol markers much more. So you've got those pieces. Now we're bringing in another piece of very vanilla cardstock. And we're going to stamp our sentiment from our name. Thanks. Okay. And I have some sponge daubers here. And I'm going to bring in a Poppy Parade ink pad and a Mango Melody ink pad. And I'm going to give my sentiment a two-tone look. So I'm going to put a sponge dauber right on my finger. And I'm going to tap it in this Poppy Parade ink pad. And I'm going to apply it to just the top half of that thanks sentiment. Now I'm switching to a different sponge dauber, putting it on my finger, and I'm going to tap it in the Mango Melody ink pad, and I'm going to apply it to the bottom part of my sentiment. And then you just give it a quick breathe, it's called huffing, and oh, I got ink on that, and then I'm going to stamp it on the very vanilla cardstock. Do you see that? Isn't that pretty? I love that. Ooh, it added an awful lot to this card because I tried it different ways. So these little sponge daubers come in handy and they're only like five bucks, I think, for a package of five of them. And I don't, I don't have one for every single color. I just keep one for the reds and one for the purples and that's good enough for me. 
So it's not like you have to have one for every single color. Now I'm going to trim this down because I want it, the paper to hug that sentiment there. Okay. Now we're ready to put our card together. I'm bringing in some gold metallic edge ribbon. It's very vanilla ribbon and it has gold along the edges. We're going to tie that right around our card base here. So let's glue all these pieces. We're going to bring in some multi-purpose liquid glue to attach our Mango Melody die cut piece. And I'm putting it just slightly off center, just slightly. Now this Ornate Garden DSP piece is going to be put on with dimensionals. Um, but actually I need to tie the ribbon around first. Let's cap that glue and set it aside. We're gonna tie this ribbon right around the card base. Okay. And I don't worry too much about positioning my ribbon until after I'm done tying it. I like having the wiggle room to adjust it. This metallic edge ribbon ties so nice. It's so soft and so smooth to work with. And I'm going to trim these edges ever so slightly just to get rid of those frayed pieces. That one looks good. Okay. And now I'm going to move this a little bit over just like that. Now we can go ahead and take the liner off of our stamp and dimensionals and apply the Ornate Garden DSP piece. And that's going to go off to the left, just like that. And we're going to put some dimensionals on the back of our flower. Now you can see that Stampin' Blends, the color does bleed through the paper. So you want to make sure that you have scratch paper underneath whenever you're coloring so you don't ruin the surface that you're working on. I'm using a mini dimensional for down there on the leaf, and this is a regular sized one for up here behind the flower itself. This is going to go on the DSP. DSP is short for designer series paper. Now this piece is going to hang off just like that. So in order to keep it from being lopsided, I'm gonna put a dimensional just on the right side and I'm gonna use liquid glue on the left side. And that one can have a regular dimensional on it and I'll put a little bit of liquid glue on the side just a little bit because I don't want it to squeeze and ooze out everywhere and we're gonna tuck that in just like this okay let me bring in my original one oh I forgot one detail wink of Stella we want to add some shimmer so this is a Wink of Stella pen. There's glitter already mixed into it and you just brush it on with this paintbrush tip. Do you see that shimmer? Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, and I'm gonna add, I can't resist. I gotta add it to the whole flower. Oh, simple little pen and look at all the effect it has. Can you see that? Oh. All right, so you'll find a picture of this card, you'll find the written tutorial for you to pin, save, or print on my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com. If you want to shop for these supplies, just head to my store. There's a shop link on my blog, or you can go directly to shopwithnicole.stampinup.net and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see more easy card making videos just like this one. So thanks for joining me today, guys. Bye.